Hello, my name is David Romsness, the General Manager of Miami Missionary Tent Company. I am so glad you got your tent and that you are serious about learning how to use it wisely and safely. I hope my staff and I have served you well up to now and we will certainly be available for any technical support that you may need. Meanwhile, this video and written instructions provided should answer most of the questions on how to get the best out of your Miami Missionary Tent. Let's look briefly at your written instructions. The Do's and Don'ts page is very important to read. On the back is why you should use a vinyl sealer to extend your tent's life. Fire marshal documents are for any local authority or permit people. Setup instructions will provide the specific measurements for the stake layout and mast height for your tent. We will have your measurements highlighted. The last page is concerning uneven terrain. This is a simple but important troubleshooting page to help your tent look its best. If you follow and understand this page, your tent will be tight throughout, which eliminates wrinkles and prevents water bagging. Before we set up a tent, let's look a little closer at your instructions. This unscaled diagram represents the stake line for any tent size. One of the columns in the chart below represents the size of your tent and or middles and has all the measurements you need for the stake line as well as our ideal center pole height. The lettered lines A through G in the graphic represent measurements for each tent in the chart. Today we will be setting up tent ends with one middle section. We will begin by tapping in stakes at positions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now let's go out and prepare your stake line. Carefully clear area where tent is to be set up. Find a location that is as level as possible and high enough for good drainage. Now determine the spot where the center of your tent will be and drive a temporary stake. Tap in a nail to attach your tape measure to. If you have a round tent only with no middle sections, use measurement B to locate and tap in your first stake at location 1. If you have one or more middle sections, attach tape measure to first temporary stake. Use your C measurement to measure the proper distance between center poles and drive additional temporary stakes as needed. Try to aim one end of your tent into the direction from which the hardest winds come. These round ends are made for storms. Now you can use your tape measure and create a straight line to square up your first stake at location 1. Move your tape measure back to first temporary stake as we showed a moment ago. Use your B measurement to locate and tap in your first stake at location 1. Make a measuring rod cut to your D measurement to make the job of laying out stakes for round ends easier. Starting at location 1, measure off the stakes for one quarter of each round end at a time. Finish first quarter with a stake at location 4.
Now the next quarter of your round end. And tap in a stake at location three. Now we will repeat what we just did at the opposite end. and tap in a stake at location two. Lay out stakes in the first quarter and we will tap in another stake on the corner where our middle section begins. If your tent is round with no middles you will already have these stakes at locations four and three. We have one middle, so we will use our diagonal F measurement between locations 3 and 6 and 4 and 5 to see if stake layout is on the square. Move stakes as needed. For the stake separation of your middle sections, you can use your tape measure as a straight edge, as well as for your E measurement. Once you are confident of stake locations, drive them in slanting slightly away from tent to keep the rope from sliding off. Now let's set up your tent. To move your tent bags into position use a dolly if you have it. Make sure the wheels don't rub the tent bag or use the wide handles on the corners of your bag. Slip your hand through and use your wrists to lift tent bag easily into position. Untie the top and pull the opening as wide as you can so the tent will come out easily. Remove the strap and be sure to put it in a safe place. You'll need it later. Now unroll your first round end. Use the bell ring or O-ring at the top to pull the tent toward your center pole position. Unfold the end so you will pull just one layer thick across the ground. This will help prevent damaging your tent top. With one person at the top and one at the tent edge, spread tent out with care. Be sure and pull on corner with D-ring only. Never pull with the vinyl. You can see we are spreading out our tent one quarter at a time to be sure and pull as little weight as necessary and try to catch some wind to keep tent off the ground. Repeat this step with the other round end. Now we'll show unfolding a middle section. After you have set your tent up a few times, you will know just where to start unfolding so your tent portions lay out easily. As we did with the round end, we unfold the middle section 
so that we pull only one layer thick, trying to catch some air to keep it off the ground. The more helpers to do this, the better. Pull your tent sections close together so they will be easier to connect. If you have a two or three piece aluminum center pole, you will first secure a base plate with bolt provided. Then you will have one or two places to line up with gold line. Push pin through and finish with hairpin clip. We will first show example of bell ring tents listed in section 4A in your instructions. Connect your hook and ring set on one side and bolt bell ring halves together. Fix the bell ring firmly to the mass pole using the long bolt provided. Now connect the other hook and ring set and begin lacing your tent portions together. If you have a tent listed in section 4B, you will have a two-piece galvanized steel center pole that can be set at five different heights, the gold mark being the ideal height. Slide top pipe out until gold mark appears. Insert pin provided through hole near the top of lower pipe and finish with hairpin clip. If your tent has a lace line, your center pole will have a pipe top like this. Slide the O-rings over the top, making sure the whole edge of your lace line is on top. Insert the pin provided. This will help prevent a violent wind from lifting the tent off of the center pole. The second pole has a spike top. It slides through punched hole where heavy leather is sewn into tent top. Slide washer on spike and insert clip provided. Now if your tent is in two or more pieces, begin lacing it together. To do this, push first two rope loops through first two holes. Stick second loop through first loop and pull down. Continue doing this till you reach bottom tent edge. If your tent has quarter poles, 61 foot and wider, watch for hook ring set at about the halfway point to be connected and not overlooked. As you finish up lacing, tie off at end with any simple knot. Be careful to connect hook ring set at bottom edge of tent. Now close valance by pressing Velcro firmly together. In the rope bag, you will find either half inch, five eighths inch, or three quarter inch staking rope. Tie one end to D-ring on tent as shown. Wrap the other end around the stake at least two or three times, leaving approximately two feet of slack, 
and tie knot. All of our knots hold very well and yet are easy to untie when you take your tent down. We will show you another close-up of this knot later. Insert wall poles and attach to tent with washers and nuts provided. Stand wall poles at a 30 degree angle inside tent and toward neighboring pole to help hold tent in position. Before moving to poles inside of tent, we tighten any loose ropes just enough to help hold tent in position. If your tent is our 61 foot wide and larger, you will have quarter poles in your tent. You will need to make a decision whether it is easier to stand these up next or your center poles. Depending on what size tent you have and what type of center poles you have purchased, after a few setups you will find which method is best for you and your crew. With the pins provided, fasten these quarter poles to the aluminum domes that are affixed to tent top. Push them up a little at a time, but not all the way up that will come after you have tightened all staking ropes. Before raising center poles, please carefully read instructional label on pole. For tent in section 4B, you can lift your galvanized steel center pole with our pole lifter. Or, if you didn't purchase that tool, you can easily lift by using rope and a wood post as shown. For tents in section 4A, if you have a aluminum winch pole, lift the lower half into position and begin cranking it up. If the winch becomes hard to crank before you reach the gold line, check your winch and cable and also look for tight ropes. With a little more slack in your ropes, the winch should go up easily to your gold line. Remember, you should only need to use one hand to operate the winch. Now, Insert pin provided. And relax the cable. Your tent pole is safely locked into position. While watching to make sure center poles remain straight, tighten staking ropes beginning with locations 1 and 2 in your stake diagram. To maintain equal tension around the tent and to keep center poles straight, it is helpful to keep teams opposite one another as they pull the ropes tight. Tighten the rest of the ropes beginning with locations 3 and 4 and if you have middle sections at your lace line locations 5 and 6, 7 and 8 and so on around the tent. If you are short of help our trucker's ratchet is a wonderful helper. Here's another close-up of that great knot for the stakes. When all staking ropes are tight, proceed to stand the wall poles straight up one by one. Now, if you have quarter poles and your tent is our 61 foot wide, stand them up straight. If you have a 76 foot or wider tent, 
The quarter pole should be on a slant with the bottom of the pole in toward the center of the tent. Push quarter poles into place so that it raises that position 12 inches above the rest of the tent. If your tent has a rain flap to cover the lace line, we like to close it after the tent is up. That way we can get all the wrinkles out. Just press Velcro firmly together all the way down. If your tent has a bell ring, you will have a rain cap to cover the bell ring opening. This will keep every drop of water out of your tent. If you are not as agile as our tent man, you can use a ladder to get on or off of tent. As we look over the tent to double check all connections and closures, I show this shot with three of our men on the tent top. Even with that extra weight, the tent remains tight and secure. We encourage you to keep your tent as tight as possible to prepare it for bad weather. To take your tent down, first remove your wall poles. And throw them clear of tent. If you have winch center poles, remove pin and lower winch. As carefully as possible, lower your center pole to the ground. Unlace tent portions. and remove bell ring bolts, pins, etc. Remove center poles from tent area. Untie staking ropes and begin folding tent as shown. Here we lay the bell ring outside of fold for safety. It is important to make tent as small and tight as possible so it will easily fit in tent bag. Retie with strap. and pull tight. To fold a middle section, count down about five holes like our man on left just did and begin folding.
at the end fold in half and begin rolling up. Congratulations on a job well done. Here is a shot of a tent set properly. Everything is nice and tight throughout. Following will be some effective ways to achieve this in your tent as well as caring for and maintaining your tent. This example shows that a few pies in the tent top are loose. To fix, we simply kick in a few of the wall poles and quarter poles around those pies. Retighten ropes. And then stand up wall poles and quarter poles. Looks great. This example shows that although tent top is tight, the valance is loose. To fix, kick in all wall poles and quarter poles and lower winch one hole lower. When finished, stand up poles again and tighten ropes. If valance is still not tight, repeat this process again. In high wind situations, you may find you need to secure your quarter poles with a stake. Here we use simple and cheap rebar and tie off. This will also work for your wall poles. If you need to move a tight wall pole, rope and a wood post will easily move pole as needed. If your wall poles are sinking into wet or soft soil, a simple piece of plywood will fix that. To extend the life of your sidewall, it is important to keep it secure to your tent as shown here. There are numerous ways to secure your sidewall to the ground with stakes, cable, etc. We show one example using 2 by material and rope to weight and secure sidewall to ground. This is especially effective when heating and cooling your tent. When not using your sidewall, be sure to roll it up rather than fold. Keeping creases out will extend its life. For safety, here are a few ideas for your stakes. Spray the tops of your stakes with bright spray paint. Apply duct tape. Use rubber chair tips. Tennis balls. or a strip of vinyl or rag. If you have a cut in your tent top, repairing it is very easy to do. Whether your tent is on the ground or in the air, place piece of plywood behind cut. Prepare patch with at least one inch overlap on each side of cut. Rounding corners makes the patch look much better.
On smaller patches, apply vinyl glue to the patch. Apply patch and press firmly. Then pull back and let the air hit it for a few seconds, then reapply. This will speed up the process. Go back a little later and check the edges. Apply additional glue as necessary. For larger tears like this L shape, we will use two overlapping patches. Because of the length, we glue just one end first. Then, apply glue to tent top and apply as before. Now, Flip tent over and repeat on underside. For small abrasions or pinholes, no patching is necessary. We have color vinyl glue available. Just a small application or two will do the job. To clean your tent, apply water and use any cheap non-concentrated laundry detergent. We use a nylon bristle brush which is firm but not abrasive to scrub tent. For spot cleaning, you can use a glass cleaner, WD-40. citrus wipes, or even stronger industrial cleaners. No matter what you use to clean your tent, experiment on a small area initially to be sure you get the safe results you desire. You can also use a mix of three parts water, one part Clorox to clean areas of your tent and help fight mildew. You must do one area only and wash tent top immediately so you won't lose any of the gloss. We also highly recommend our Ultra Gloss Sealer. This protectant not only seals into plasticizers that keep the tent supple, but seals out dirt and pollutants, adding not only to its life, but making it largely self-cleaning. Apply with sponge or for larger tents a sprayer. We know that these troubleshooting tips will be very helpful in caring for your tent. Let us know if we can be of further help and also if you have any ideas on how to care for, maintain, and extend the life of your tent.